Hello everyone, I haven't made any YouTube um, service videos for a while. The reason is that I made a whole bunch of them that I lost in a laptop hard drive crash. I had some beautiful detailed videos about a Fender Super Reverb, um, PEG B15 Portaflex, um, Fender Deluxe Reverb rebuilt from the ground up, Fender Twin Reverb. I had all these very detailed videos that I lost all in this hard drive crash. I got so bummed out that I stopped making these things. And um, it would take a real special project, or maybe a, a special project, to um, stimulate me to, to start and try doing them again. So I have a little project to show you. And I have this nice checklist here of routines that I'm gonna go through on this arm um, to get through this video. So just con let's consider this the introduction. What made me restart making videos? Uh, when I got a Ampeg B15 at the beginning of last year, I also picked up this chassis with it. What is this basket case, you ask? It's a Fender Schumann amplifier from 1968. This basket case is pretty much how most of my projects begin. Because locally, I live in the tropics, we have very um, hot, humid climate that is not kind to old electronics equipment. Most of the old amps that I have worked on are in this kind of, some are in this condition and some are a bit better. But this kind of condition project is typical how I start things off. So let's take a, a little further look because this is the first time I've seen a Fender showman locally and um, I am quite keen on it. So, yes, this project is about bringing this back to looking like, not like new, but up and running as if it was never out of use. Now, let's take a quick closer look at this thing. Fender Schumann amplifier. And these two vertical lines, these black lines against the silver face, are why we know this is a 68 model. Okay, so as you can see, the um, text printing is mostly all there, but the condition of the aluminum is very flaky looking and um, dirty and a bit dented, but the way I've cleaned things up, it's going to look pretty good when I'm done. As you can see on this side here, this, this edge is pretty dented here. These jacks are dented and sort of pushed in. And so there's a little bit of a bend here as well. But to be honest, those things to me are a bit... This kind of denting here is typical of an amp that's fallen forward when the jack was inserted. And um, this kind of looks typical too. I often see fenders where this front line is not straight at all. And I will be able to straighten this back out. This was probably just from... Um, being dented when this chassis was moved around in storage. So let's take a little closer look. We have present but knobs that are a bit busted. We have the original blue Astron capacitors that have um, that pretty much stop after amps of this era. We have a, a little tremolo roach. We have one replaced um, capacitor here some replaced parts on the tube sockets some original see a replaced capacitor here the wiring of course this is supposed to be yellow wiring it's all dirty looking i mean i don't know how long this has been um, kept in a dusty or dirty environment and lastly i think we have a um, well we have a few things here we have a replaced fuse holder um a replaced re two replaced power switches, power and standby switches, and missing output jacks. So, let's flip it over and take a look underneath. Okay, we've flipped it over and damn, this thing is rusty. Wow. Most of you DIY amp refurbishing guys are probably vomiting and fainting right now, saying, man, throw that thing in the trash. But the truth is, many of my projects have started life this way and have come out pretty great. Just to take a quick look down in the other corner of the workshop here, that deluxe reverb there, 
was in worse condition. I have a, a very dirty, a dusty band master reverb here that was in um, worse condition as well. So if I can clean some rust, I can definitely get this thing running. Let's take a look under the capacitor hood here. And wow, we can see some parts have been replaced. Um, at a glance, I believe... What are these values? 75. Yeah, I guess all of these have been replaced. I'm not sure about these. But these have definitely been replaced. And we know that from looking at the brand, but also the bad wiring work done on the solder joints there as well. So as usual, all of these will be changed. All right, so we have this quick visual assessment. Let me explain my list over here. Okay, so you see what kind of mess I'm starting out with. Let's go down this list to see how I'm gonna tackle all the individual issues of this project. Starting off, first of all, this is not a DIY instructional video. Me working around with, in this is working with uh, voltages between 300 and 500 volts at very close proximity. And this is not an instruction for you guys to just mess around unless you know about working on tube amps. So that's my disclaimer there. Okay, next thing. Tests we've got to do. Right? These are just routine tests to evaluate what parts I may need to, re may need to replace. Transformers. The transformers under here, we've got a big power transformer. We've got a choke transformer, which I can see has been, is not the original one, and I'll probably replace this. And then we have the output transformer. This output transformer is similar to a twin reverb transformer, except that it would be for 8 ohms output instead of 4 ohms output on a twin reverb. That was the idea of the, the Showman out. The Showman came with one 8 ohm cabinet and um, with one speaker in it. And the dual Showman was with two. Uh, 15s, I think, which gave it a 4 ohm cabinet. So, Showman equals 8 ohms. So, what I have to do to test those transformers is to be, to be at the beginning now is to check the continuity, which is to measure with a um, uh, multimeter the resistance on all of the windings and look for any shorts between windings or any open windings. That's all I can do for now on the transformers. Later on, when the amp is up and running and being tested, or prior to being tested, I will check what voltages are actually coming out of the transformer windings. And that's later on. So this is a sort of a two-stage two preparation and um, moving further into the actual getting it running. Looking for damage. Parts that are broken or missing. As I pointed out already, we've got a few little missing bits. Um, the output jacks, some power switches that will change fuse, hold maybe the choke, choke is not the original choke, and um, of course some parts are broken here, uh, sorry, the knobs, <coughs> sorry, some, also some of the knobs are broken, this um, pilot light is not original, and um, of course there's some dents here and there, and a lot of rust, so that's the stuff I'll consider damage. It needs to be repaired, whatever is broken and missing. Also, the electrolytic caps below. Next thing, pots. You control the pots along the front, and these knobs there. Um, any or all of them may have broken, uh, damaged uh, tabs so that they may not be given the correct resistance and continuity between all the connections on them. Um, so, I will go through all of these and measure them to make sure that these pots don't need replacing. Next thing, resistors. In the, on the circuit board itself here, there's certain resistors that get a lot of high voltage to them. And any of the ones that obviously have some wear and tear over the years from high voltage and higher current passing through them, I will change. They originally used carbon composition resistors and I'll try to keep this uh, as original as possible and reuse carbon compositions and in those spots and I will pretty much test all the resistors to see what needs to be changed either from not working at all or from the, the value being a bit far off what it should be. Capacitors. I do know that I have to change all the electrolytic capacitors in the power supply, 
main power supply, the bias power supply, and, and in some in the preamp as well. There are these blue Astron capacitors, which are very well regarded in the amplifier world, and I will avoid changing these, but I've got to test them. Um, they're supposed to give, give a great classic sound, and they pretty much don't, they're not found in amps that are newer than this. I do have an old dead board from some sort of silver face basement, probably a basement of these same year. This was an abandoned rail basket case project I had years ago. And you can see on this that I do have some pots, some jacks, maybe a switch or two, and a few of those same blue capacitors on this board. So if there are any that I need to, um, to scavenge from here onto here, I'll do that. I'll try to avoid using brand new um, capacitors if these ones still work. Now that's it for preliminary component checks. Once I compile a list of stuff that needs to be replaced, I'll order those things. But I have work to do. I've got to clean this thing, get rid of the bits of dents and so on, and um, figure out what sort of cosmetics how far I'm going to go with the cosmetic repairs, what's going to be clean, what's going to be replaced. And I also have to build a cabinet. Online I can get the dimensions and I'm, I would be able to build a pretty nice um, silver face reproduction cabinet. That's not a problem, that will come down towards the end of the project. <laughs> Lastly, there will be parts that I need to replace, whether I like it or not. And that's listed here with briefly, which is the electrolytics I mentioned before, have to be replaced on an app this age. Tubes, 6L6s and 12AX7s, and maybe a 12 as well. Whatever resistors are necessary in the power supply and so on. And then the cabinets. The cabinet is, as I said, a big thing at the end. So this is my checklist for now. And as I go through these steps, I'll try to document the interesting points of it into this video. So. Hope you hang on for this ride because it's going to be quite alright. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the pot test procedure. I've hooked up these leads to um, to the first volume pot. I've disconnected the ground connection on one of the tabs. And that allows me to um, test it, the pot properly. And okay, so on full volume it's testing just over 1 mega ohm. And rotating anti-clockwise, it goes all the way down to zero. So that is just a quick show of a volume pot working correctly. Okay, so I'm making my way through some initial tests and tweaks. I've already straightened out the dented um, edges that I had here. Just a few smacks with a, a mallet took care of that. I have tested all the pots and they're all perfect. They're all turning. I had to loop them up a bit, but they are turning and they all have continuity between all the tabs. I've tested all the blue caps and all of them so far test perfectly and within, very much within spec, um, but all of the electrolytic ones as I expected were dead. I found one um, unusual little mod here. Some fool put a thousand picofarad capacitor from the plate connection on the first tube to ground, which would have dumped a pile of, um, of treble out of the, the sound on that channel. But who knows, maybe you were chasing a, a base mod or something, but it's, it's a very, very foolish modification. But the soldering is so old that it looks it looks original, so I had to, to actually double check the schematic to make sure it wasn't some funny showman thing I didn't know about. Anyway, that's it for the preamp. Um, unless these capacitors leak, I might have to change them, but as far as the actual value under low voltage testing conditions, these blue caps are all perfect. So I'm gonna just kind of continue and keep looking around for problems. I've also tested the transformer winding continuity, not the voltage, and the continuity so far is okay. I've seen some, some messed up heater wires here that I'm gonna replace, but other than that, I don't um, find any shorts from one winding to the next, no broken open windings, and no shorts from windings to ground. So, so far, 
both transformers, main transformers, test OK. OK, so I'm picking out the few bad parts. I've gotten rid of those crappy capacitors. I'm finding a few things that need to change, like this pilot light. And I'm having a good time going through this box here, which was um, a bit of a dead amp, fender amp parts bin. And I'm finding a piece for the, um, the pilot light, and I'm finding a more accurate fuse holder. And I even just found a choke, because I know the choke on this is not the original one. So I'm having a, some luck so far finding period correct pieces that have been missing from here. I even spot some some power switches and these are the correct ones so if these all work I'm gonna put these back in because they're, they're period correct you know unless I find that they are bad let's start off with these old parts okay you've got some jacks here to replace the um, missing speaker jacks so I'll continue scavenging around in here okay so in the first session of wiring here I've done a few things. Um, I've taken out the electrolytic capacitors that were bad, replaced the speaker jacks that were missing. I'm swapping the power and standby switches presently, taken old um, screen and grid resistors off of the power tube sockets. None of those were in spec. Um, I have to convert to a three prong cord. I've taken out the old two prong cord here. Uh, I've replaced the choke with one that I had hanging around. I've replaced some bad heater wiring and replaced the um, the pilot light piece here. And that's it for now. The ne what I'm going to do is make up a list of parts that I need to order. Okay, so quick last notes for the evening. I'm going to need some resistors, 470 ohm for the screens on the power tubes, 1.5k ohm on the grids of the power tubes we're using, 2 watt and 1 watt values here. Um, for the electrolytics up here, 25 microfarad, 25 volt um, cathode bypass capacitors. For the power supply in the doghouse below, um, 2 70 microfarads, 3 22 microfarads, that's for the preamp. And this is for the bias here, it's on the schematic it says 50 volts here, but I'm bumping that up to 100 volts. Um, and then that's actually it. All the other stuff I had laying around. I had a choke laying around. I had the jacks and um, switches laying around and a few new fuse holder. I've got to get a three conductor cable plug. i probably change the knobs. Some are okay. They all, they all look terrible. So I'll change those. The cabinet parts I'll need for the, the cabinet job later on will be the handle, corner, chrome corners, chassis straps and, and bolts, um, feet and the logo. So unless I can think of anything else, that's what I need to order now. So that's it until then. Okay folks, not too long later, my parts have arrived. And uh, let's do a little unboxing because everybody loves fun unboxing videos. So let's see what parts I've gotten for this show. I also order a few little service parts that I use in my regular guitar and amp repairs. So we have a few extras on there. Right, so first things first, I got some silver face style grill cloth, and that is the type with a bit of black and white and silver and blue as well. And also within this roll, I have the black correct fender style Tolex. So we put that aside, that's for the cabinet itself. Okay, we have a quarter of 6L6s, JJ 6L6. And this bag is the rest. Let's see. I'll point out the main things. We have capacitors for the power supply, the electrolytics, and some smaller ones for the bias and preamp, also electrolytics. I have chrome corners here for the cabinet again. And handle for the top. I always, always buy a few extras because I, uh, when I build my speaker cabinets and do some other work, I keep extra handles around. Chassis straps, those are the, um, pretty much act as the washers for the, the bolts that hold this in the cabinet. I have a couple of logos, then the black face 
and early silver face style logos. I have a few amps that need these, so I have a set of three here. All right. And the rest are some service parts, some input jacks, pots, and that's about it. A couple of resistors for the e tube sockets, which are over here, which I took all of those on and put in all new parts there. And some chassis bolts, which hold the, uh, the chassis and the cabinet through these chassis straps. So that's it. Kind of wish I bought some more parts. It's always like Christmas Day getting one of these orders. Uh, I still have to get the knobs. Forgot to get those. Um, but I have a lot of time ahead of me, no big deal. So the next couple of clips I will do is installing some of these things. Okay, so these blue capacitors have been installed. And in this case, these are polarized capacitors. So utmost care is taken that the positive and negative sides are put in the same place. In this case, the negative is along here, positive is along here. And in this, these are in series, so this is a negative, that's positive, and then it's flipped around the other way. This is negative and this is positive, right? So these are, these are actually acting as one capacitor. All right, on to the insides. Okay, I'm pretty much done here in the chassis on the inside. And I'm kind of having a hard time remembering what else I need to do. Oh yes, power switch here and a new power cord here, right? But as far as the components themselves, I'm done. I showed earlier that none of these original blue capacitors were leaking. So I've left all of those in place. And pretty much all the other um, resistors I've measured are in spec and saw all of the pots there. I'm going to double check these resistors as I mentioned it. This tremolo roach probably isn't working. I'm gonna guess, but if it isn't, no problem. I'll just replace that. Okay, so what I've done now is electrolytic capacitors, which um, filter the cathodes on all of the, um, most of the preamp things. And in this, it's less than a regular reverb model. There are only five of them in this. The reverb models have seven. This is a 25, 25, 25, 25, and a five over here for the tremolo right and that's it and there's one over here on the bias right which is this blue one here that's the bias filter capacitor which is a negative so it's backwards to how the rest are, have been set up over on the power tube sockets i have replaced the um, grid stopper resistors which are 1500 ohms right that's those ones going across there and then the screen resistors which are 470 ohms Oh, I also did a 470 ohm one over here by the bias because you really need your bias circuit working perfectly and um, so this old one that was there replaced. Back to the sockets, um, normally these are all carbon composition which are the you know the kind of brown types with the sharp edges here and these ones I've upgraded slightly these are one watt and two watt um, metal film I think metal oxide and uh, those are just um, for a little increased reliability. You definitely don't want these 1500 ones going bad. Again, they're related to the bias circuit. When you lose your bias voltage on pin five here, you're in real big trouble. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the switch and um, cord connection here, if I even have a cord here. And then I put on the knobs, and that's pretty much it for the chassis. All right, so my quick little review from this particular session. I put the, um, the pots, sorry, knobs on. Straighten out these two input jack um, faceplate area here was a bit dented, and I straightened that out. All right, so I've done all new electrolytics, installed a new power cord, and all of the resistors and capacitors I showed you. So, I'm gonna do a review, double check everything, and then start the process of turning it on for the first time. Okay, I'm back to the Schumann project. That's the chassis sitting over there on the left. And this is the head shell which I've prepared and it's made out of yellow pine with box joints on the edges. 
which is how fenders were done back in the day. The box joints on the old ones though were a bit closer together. They were done at intervals of quarter inch. And this is done at one inch just for, well, I did it by hand, so I couldn't do it too much closer than that. But that is plenty strong. And it's the right way to build the corners on these things because the chassis fits right into the corners. There's no space on the inside to add reinforcement cleats. So you have to get the strength of the joint from the joint itself in a locking way is best. So what I'm gonna do next right now, there's a bevel on the front of all fender amps. You could look at some, some old combos here and you see on this one, old twin reverb, there's a bevel on the front. It's a familiar look. And I'm now gonna cut that bevel here, which will give you a sort of lean back across the front and match your face plate. And um, that will leave me to do the edge routing, the rounding, prior to applying the Tolex final. So I'm gonna do that front edge cut now. There we go, I've cut the bevel across the face. And the next step is for me to take a half inch radius route a bit and go around all edges. Okay, so now having cut the, the uh, bevel at the front, I've also rounded all the edges over with a half inch radius bit. Um, now is the perfect time to test fit the chassis into this box and drill the holes in the right spot to hold the chassis, which are these holes here. This is an old 65 basement head. This is kind of rare, this is an AA165. And I'll take some cues from this to, to, just to show me exactly how much to round over the edges and smooth, it, smooth everything over and take um, certain measurements when doing over the vinyl and so on. But for now, I'm just gonna test fit, drill those holes. Then I will need to glue into here, cut and glue in some little um, brackets, uh, cleats really, that would hold the front panel and the back panel as well. So that's the next thing. Okay, well I'm done for now. What I've done, rounding the edges, I've drilled the holes to mount the chassis later. I've put cleats on the inside to mount the back panel and front panel where the grill would be. So that's it for now. I am gonna take the opportunity to put a little bit of termite treatment fluid on the inside corners and around the edges because where I live, we do have problems with termites and wood lice over time. So I'll do that before the vinyl wrap goes on. Okay, today for the showman, I have my pieces of Tolex cut out, top panel, bottom panel, sides. And I'm gonna apply them with contact cement. And what you do is you do the sides first and then trim it a bit like that. And then you put the top and bottom panels overlapping. So there's like a half inch overlap on the top and bottom seams. And that's it, it's pretty, pretty efficient because that way um, you can use pretty small pieces to get a covering all the way around. You don't need a long piece to go all the way around. Just need a piece for each panel. Okay, so I'm gonna get to that now. Okay, our toilet has been applied. And again, following the old basement patterns of, of cutting the vinyl and so on, I've done the same methods here. Right, and we're looking good so far. You see the overlap that I mentioned on all top and bottom edges. So the next thing is to construct the grill like that there and put the fabric on that, which is what I have here. This is silver face style grill cloth. And um, that'll be next. And after that would be to put the showman in the cab and to put on all the metal corners, handle and logo and so on. Okay, now the front grill is on, which is just a plywood board painted black and the grill cloth cut and stapled on. So that's pretty much ready for chassis fitment and external parts and the logo right there. Okay, a few small updates, a few big updates. I've put the handle and chrome 
feet on the cab. Now, this is a 68 Showman, as evidenced by the black lines here, but I don't have the aluminum border that you would usually put around the, um, the grill. I have a few strips of it from some other old projects, but I don't have enough to go all the way around. So I'm just gonna leave that off for now. In future, I'll add it on. Next, I have to put on the Fender logo, which is the old tail logo, and I have to put some feet on here. What I have not done with this cabinet, I have not made the provision to put the, um, the hooks that you would see on basements and bandmasters to clamp the head onto the cabinet. I just don't have those parts with me now and I really don't intend to use it that way so I'm not bothered with that. Now let's look over at the amplifier updates. Okay so I did manage to fire up and test the amp. I didn't worry to um, film the entire initial startup and troubleshooting process because I knew I would have too many little things to go through but I did get everything working. Um, I had a few noisy plate resistors here that I swapped a few tremolo caps were missing and I replaced those. Um, there were some connections broken in between these two jacks here that were causing this to make a bit of hiss. But other than that, um, when I fired this amp up, it turned on no problem. There was a little bit of humming and hissing that I, as I mentioned, I got rid of. But um, it fired right up, no problems, no blown fuses, no smoke, no funny business and um, it biased up pretty easily once I started making those adjustments. I put in some old Sylvania 6L6s that I took out of my twin reverb, so it's not, I'm not using new tubes, I'm just using a set of tubes from another amp that I, I know work well. And then I picked through a few different 12AX7s and 1287. Some of the first 12AX7s I put in were a bit microphonic, so I swapped a few till I, I got some low noise, right? So I could, sh I could turn it on now and show you, um, and that would really conclude the amp work and the rest of the job would just be fitting it into the, the cabinet and securing all the fittings. And here we go, barring a few small details, I'm actually done. I still have to make a back panel. and. That's about it. Back panel, I'm done. So that's a complete restoration of a 68 Fender Showman. Hopefully I'll get some skilled friend of mine to play a nice demo on it. So this is gonna to add to the stable of amps that I've restored. Most of these here, these old Fender, super reverb and reverb bandmaster and so on. I'm very glad to add this to the lineup.